everybody, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, we're going to be talking about overlanding storage solutions. And, you know, I've made a couple of videos uh, and maybe podcasts about this before back in the day, right? But if you followed me for any period of time, you know that my setup changes literally monthly or maybe even more frequently. Um, and the reason for that is because I'm constantly trying to improve it. I'm constantly trying to, you know make it more comfortable, make it a little bit better of a trip, uh, make it more fun. So I have, you know, obviously made a lot of changes to my storage solutions, to my gear that I carry to try and reduce space uh, that the gear takes up and all that good stuff. So I just wanted to kind of talk through a few things today. I wanted to touch a little bit on how to reduce some space inside of your vehicle by changing up some of your gear. Again, not with a focus on spending a ton of money, but just on a, with a focus of like kind of picking the right stuff. Um, I also wanted to touch on kind of prioritizing your gear and when possible, moving stuff to the outside of the vehicle. Um, and then third, kind of just making better use of the interior space in your vehicle. So whether you have a pickup truck or an SUV or a car, you know, whatever you have, there are always ways to be more efficient with the space inside your vehicle. So we're gonna kind of touch on all three of those things today. Um, as always, I would also like to hear from you guys, right? So. As I always say, I'm just a guy from Indiana, right, that is giving you my opinions about this stuff, but that doesn't mean I'm the expert by any means. So I'm going to give you kind of my feedback, but I would love to hear from you guys on, or in the comments down below. If you're on YouTube, post up in the comments below. If you're on the podcast, pop over to YouTube and, and post up in the comments or shoot me an email at allthingsoverlanding at gmail.com. I'd love to chat with you. Um, but let me know what you guys are using. Let me know what your setups are. Let me know if you have questions about my setup. Happy to help with anything that you guys may have questions with. So I'm um, looking forward to chatting with you guys after you watch the video. But before we dive into it, I did want to just quickly touch on my featured partners. Uh, there will be links to all these guys in the description down below. Again, I'm just a little guy, content creator. Uh, I just do this for fun. Uh, but these companies are awesome. So these are all people that I've met, you know, through online stuff and just been really impressed with their gear. And I do try and always keep it real and kind of be genuine and honest with my, my reviews and my feedback on stuff. And I will say that all these guys have awesome events or products. And that's the only reason I work with them is again, just kind of shine some light on their awesome stuff that they're doing or awesome stuff that they sell. So uh, again, check out the links down below in the description if you're interested in any of this stuff. But starting off first, uh, Overland Addict. They sell literally anything that you could want for overlanding from fuel cans to rooftop tents to traction boards to cook stuff. I mean, just everything. So definitely go check him out. Awesome stuff. Uh, second, Last US Bags, Last US Bag Company. Uh, an awesome, awesome U.S. company kind of on the West Coast. They make specifically bags for overlanding, which is really cool. Um, so they love the outdoors, and they just wanted to kind of make bags that people like you and I could use when we go overlanding. So definitely check them out as well. They've got some awesome stuff. I've got a handful of their things, too, and I love them. Um, third, more Overland Expo. So this is happening in February 2021. It is going to be an amazing event. It's like the Midwest overlanding expo so you definitely need to check that out if you click on the link below it will take you to their facebook page where you can pre-register for the event because tickets aren't even on sale yet but then they're going to ping you and let you know once those tickets become available so you can get them so click through that link below to check them out and then last but not least northology adventures awesome awesome gal um takes people on like some guided events up in like the up and wisconsin those areas and just super, super cool stuff. And she's just super awesome and down to earth too. Um, also, if you scroll to the middle of that page through the link below, you'll see they have a free overlanding magazine that comes out every month. Um, and it's awesome. Beautiful photography, awesome articles. And again, it's free, right? So why not? So without further ado, let's dive into the video. All right, guys, so as I mentioned, um, on today's episode, we are talking about overlanding storage solutions. I'm gonna kind of run through a bunch of stuff, mostly stuff that I have that I have experience with, also some other things that I'm aware of that may work for your vehicle, depending on what it is. Um, but I've kind of broken it out into three sections. So for the first section, I'm gonna be talking through ways to reduce gear and just the space that it takes inside your rig. Um, again, I'm talking about this because I have a ton of experience with this. I've literally probably had like five different toilet setups to try and reduce the amount of space that it takes and make it more comfortable and more convenient. Um, I've had, you know, 
a ton of different recovery gear. And I kind of moved, I got a winch on the outside of the truck and I reduced some of the stuff that I had to carry with me, um, reduced the footprint of that stuff without losing any functionality of the recovery gear that I've got. So that's another thing. It's just literally kind of like any problem that humankind has ever solved, right? Like looking at the problem, looking at what you've got and trying to find a solution for it. Um, so, you know, again, some examples. I've already mentioned the toilet. That was one that was an interesting, fun year and a half or two journey uh, to kind of reduce the size of that and get it down to a, a workable state. Um, I use what's called the Turbo Toilet. It's from a company called Black Pine. I believe they're out of business now, so you can't even really get them anymore. Um, but I will put a link in the description down below to one that's really comparable that I found on Amazon. Um, but basically it's like a fold flat toilet. It has these heavy duty hinges that come out and it will fold from about an inch, inch and a half up to like 12 inches. Um, but previously I was using a five gallon bucket with like a lid on it. Took up, you know, 10 times as much room. So again, I'm not gonna harp on that because I've talked about it before, but that is an example of finding ways to save space, right? Um, another way that's gonna sound kind of funny is just reducing the amount of stuff you take. Um, for example, I know when I first started overlanding, I packed everything, including the kitchen sink, right? Like I was like, the whole point of overlanding is to be prepared and you gotta bring all this stuff with you and you need to have seven recovery straps and six D-rings and you just need all the stuff, anything you could possibly use, you gotta take it with you, right? And that's not necessarily true. Again, I am not encouraging you to underpack, I'm just saying be careful with what you pack, think about it, think through it fully, bring everything that you need, but don't bring anything else. You don't have to have, you know, rain gear if you know it's not gonna rain. You don't have to have winter gear if it's the middle of summer, right? Like you don't have to bring all of your gear that you've ever bought on every single trip. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so that's another thing to think about. Is just think about the stuff that you're taking and whether it's necessary or not, and then just try and reduce. Um, you know, your sleeping solution is probably going to take up a lot of space. Um, so again, kind of without harping on it too much, my previous setups, originally I had like a really, one of those big Walmart tents, those instant up type of deals that have the metal poles and you kind of pull them and they click, that kind of deal. Um, but I mean, it's probably, it was probably like eight or 10 inches square and then probably like 36 inches long. The thing was huge. It weighed probably 50 or 20, 30 pounds. I mean, it was a heavy, big metal thing that was, you know, you couldn't even flex it or, or put it in certain spots. I had to take up like the whole floorboard in the back of my Xterra. And that was just the tent. And then especially if I have my kids with me or something, I've got sleeping pads, I've got multiple sleeping bags. I've got a cot that I used to use, which again, just like the tent, is like a hard, big, metal, long thing that you had to store inside the truck. Um, and then I had, you know, memory foam mattresses that I brought with me, like memory foam pad, basically, that was rolled up. But rolled up, I mean, that thing was probably 48 inches long and like, you know, 16, 18, 20 inches tall. I mean, it was huge. Um, you could squish it a little bit and make it fit into places, but it still took up just a ton of room. Um, so then I switched to hammock camping. And I could get my Kelty Noah tarp and my tribal or my tribe hammock into a backpack. You know, I could take my backpack with a book and some food and some battery packs and my hammock and my tent, and it would all just fit into one backpack. Um, so again, be thinking about that stuff, right? And you have to balance out comfort with size. So I'm also not necessarily advocating for reducing, it's not like we're talking about backpacking, right? Like we're not talking about literally shaving off every kilogram that we can. We're talking about balancing out space savings with comfort. So if you hate hammock camping, obviously you're not going to be a hammock camper. That's fine. Um, but then think about your tent. Is there maybe a smaller footprint tent that you can get? Is there one that fits better in your setup? Um, I did have a Coleman sort of instant up tent that I really loved, and it was not the hard metal long tubular kind of thing. It was like a big round thing, probably like two inches thick and maybe about like 24 or 36 inches across, somewhere two or three feet across, just like a big round thing, but it was pretty flat. I could slide it down beside my bins and stuff in the back of my truck, and it took up very little use, usable space. Um, so again, think about your gear, think about the ways to save space, think about what you really need, and then focus on stuff that will help you save. Um, another thing that takes up a ton of space that I never really thought about until I started to get into it, folding chairs. So when I first started overlanding, I just had, you know, the typical cheapy Target, Walmart folding chairs that come in a big long bag, right? And they're kind of a pain to get out of the bag and they get tangled up all the time. You open them, they rip, the, you know, the hinges go out on them. They're just cheapy, crappy chairs. But they're also 
you know, three and a half, four feet long, maybe three feet long. Um, but they're just like a long folding chair. Again, they're rigid. They don't fold down. They take up a ton of space. So especially when I would used to go with my kids, I'd have a few Plano crates across the back and then I'd have these chairs stacked up on top of it. And then I'd have the tent and I couldn't even see out the back and I was chock full of stuff. Like not even enough room for the kids hardly to sit in the truck. So, you know, one of the options, I made a video about it. I'll put a, a card up here for you if you want to go check that out. I recently got a click chair. It's a little expensive, about 90 bucks. But I'm telling you, like, one, the quality of this thing is amazing. Like, it just, I've used it probably 20 times now. I've used it for all my kids' sporting events because it's about the size of a big water bottle. I show up and everybody else has these big bags on straps over their shoulders and everything. And I walk up holding this thing in my hand and I go, bloop, and flip it open and click a couple things and you're sitting you're sitting in a chair. It's comfortable, it's sturdy, and it literally is so small that I fit it in my drawer system in the back of my truck. So I permanently just have it in my truck. I never have to worry about, did I pack it, did I not pack it? Because it's so small that it just stays in my truck all the time. I mean, you could literally put it under a seat in your car or truck. So think about that kind of stuff. It, it, sometimes it's worth it to spend a little bit more. Again, I'm not advocating for going and buying a $200 Helinox folding chair. Those are really great. I'm not saying anything bad about those. But you don't have to spend 150, 200 bucks on a chair. You might have to spend more than 20 or 30 bucks on a chair to get a good one that's small enough and sized right. Um, another option though is like my Marchway chair, which I've talked about before too. It's about the same size as the Click. It's just a little bit less convenient to set up. Um, but it's about 35, 40 bucks. So it was pretty cheap too. Um, so I'll put links to both of those down in the description below in case you know it helps you. But those things are a good way to save a lot of room. Think about your chairs. Um, Cooking, another huge thing, right? Like when you get into really cooking, then you've got pots and pans and knives and cutting boards and, you know, fridge freezers and you just have all this stuff that comes with cooking. So again, balancing out convenience with the amount of stuff that you need and the space savings that you want, um, you just have to kind of think through like how serious you want to be about cooking, right? Um, I personally have a Coleman double burner grill, but again, I have a drawer system and I have a slide that comes out and it sits actually inside of the bottom of that slide. So for me, it's not really taking up a lot of space. It doesn't really bother me. So, and I do like to cook, but like I also have a 55 liter Alpacool fridge that I just got a month or so ago. Thing's awesome. It's also freaking huge. So you got to think about it. I, and I actually didn't think about it as much as I should. I was just like, yeah, I want to get the biggest one that I can for the least amount of money because I'm cheap, right? Um, and I do like it and I do plan. Like I'm going in a few weeks, I'm going up to the Keweenaw Overland Adventure Retreat Corps. Um, and I'm going to be gone for four days and four nights, three nights. So three nights, four days. Um, and my plan, I mean, we're going to be in the middle of nowhere. So my plan is to just stock up the fridge freezer and just keep the food in there and run the fridge the whole time, right? So for me, it makes sense, but you know, you can get smaller fridges. They're cheaper, they save you money. And if all you need is a 30 liter fridge, then get a 30 liter, right? Like think about the space versus the, the, the trade-off for that convenience. Um, and the same goes for coolers, right? So like I have this, I have this huge like 68 liter, I forget how big it is, 70? I don't even remember. I'll put a link to this below too, but I love it. It's my Coleman Extreme cooler. and But it's huge. It'll hold ice for a good three or four days pretty easily. Um, but you could put, I don't know, four, five, six cases, 24 packs of beer in that thing and not even fill it up. So it's just ridiculous, right? Like I used it on my Trans-Wisconsin Adventure trip, which was like three or four days, four days, I think it was. And it held ice the whole time, and, and I had enough food and stuff. I mean, plenty. I, had, I didn't even fill a thing halfway up, um, even with drinks and beers and everything else, right? Um, but, like, I didn't need it, and it took up a ton of space in the truck, and, like, I had to move stuff around just to get into it because it's so big, and I didn't have great organization back then. Um, so that's another thing with reduction of gear is organization. So just be smart about how you store the stuff where you store it, how you set it up so that you can get to stuff when you need it. Don't put the stuff you're gonna use multiple times a day in the back and then all the stuff you're not gonna use in the front. Um, so there's a ton ton of ways to improve your storage solutions. Um, so that was kind of part one. All right guys, so part two, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about prioritizing your gear and moving stuff to the exterior of the vehicle. Now I know that's oddly specific, right? Um, but what I mean by that is like there are, so. When I first started, I was buying all this gear. I was buying jerry cans. And I was like, what do I, these things reek of gas. I don't have anywhere to store them. I guess I'll sandwich them between the passenger front seat and the passenger rear seat. 
by pushing my seat all the way back and just sandwich them there. But then I lost my whole floorboard to gas can, right? To a gas can. Um, like water. If you're going to be gone for a long time, you're going to need a five or a seven gallon water jug, right? So that takes up a ton of space. Um, you know, the high lift, if you have a high lift jack, do you keep it inside your truck? Do you have a mount on your bumper? Do you have a roof rack mount? Do you have a rear bumper with a swing out that has a high lift on it? How are you going to store that? Um, and then, you know, like air compressors. If you're going to be airing down a lot, you're going to run an air compressor. There are a lot of like high quality off-road ARB, you know, compressors that you can put under your vehicle, that you can put under the hood, that you don't have to mount inside your vehicle. So you need to think about prioritizing the gear, prioritizing your spend too, right? So like buying that more expensive, you know, meant for overlanding ARB double compressor is gonna cost you what, 300 bucks, 350 bucks. Um, I bought a Vire 88P. It's much slower than that ARB, right? Um, it's tankless, so it's just on and it's running. But I store that inside my vehicle because I want it to last. It's not really intended to be outside in the elements, getting water thrown on it, rust, things like that. Um, so I keep that inside my truck. But that was a decision I had to make, right? Was do I go ahead and spend, I mean, that thing was about 50 bucks. So I love it. And I'll put a link to that down below too. But so I, I made the decision that to me, spending an extra 250, 300 bucks on a compressor just to save that, you know, what, 10 by four inches of space wasn't worth it. So I keep that inside my truck. But for you, it may be in a really awkward spot or you may be like, you may air up and down constantly and really want the fastest, best, most sturdy air compressor you can get. So you could move that outside the vehicle. You could put it up underneath the body on the inside of the frame. You could put it under the hood, right? But so getting the stuff out of your vehicle and out to the exterior of the truck is a way to save a lot of space and maybe even add some convenience, right? Um, so like when it comes to water, Obviously, you're gonna to have to have water to drink and things like that. You're probably gonna want that to be inside. But like the example that I'm thinking of, and I don't have one yet, but I think if the more longer trips that I take and I need to shower, the more I'm gonna be looking at building one of these probably, um, like a road shower style water tank on the outside. You can build them yourself with PVC. There's a number of videos out there on YouTube. They look awesome. You can pressurize them with your air compressor and then you can just use them until the air runs out, hook your air compressor up, repressurize it. Um, very simple, pretty inexpensive to make. But I think most of them that I've seen hold eight or 10 gallons of water. So you could move that to the outside. And again, maybe that's not your potable water, right? Maybe that's not your drinking water, but you could use it for washing dishes. You could use it for taking a shower. You could use it for cleaning off your clothes. If you go, you know, if you ride a mountain bike or go hiking and you get super filthy and dirty. Um, so that is a way to, rather than having to have all the water inside of your vehicle in multiple tanks and things like that, you can move that to the outside using something like a road shower. Oh, another way to, so I mentioned earlier those jerry cans, right? And originally I kind of just had them sandwiched between the seats. So recently I made a video, I'll link to it here, um, where I took a jerry can and I basically mounted it to the back of my hatch of my Xterra. Um, now this is something that I had to drill holes through the truck, right? So it's a little dicey. You may not want to do that, but if you have like a pickup truck, if you have like a Tacoma or a, you know, a Ranger or something like that, and you've got a rack in the back, there are a ton of different things for roto packs a ton of different options like that. You could get roto packs and put them on your roof rack. There's tons and tons of options to get fuel out of your vehicle, which is a benefit in and of itself from like a smelliness standpoint. And if there were to be an accident, I'd much rather have it on the outside of the vehicle than inside the vehicle with me. Um, but so that's a way to get that out of the vehicle. So again, if you check out that video up above, I'll show you how I did that. So specifically, if you have an Xterra, I think that video will be really helpful for you. Um, so that is another option for getting stuff out of the vehicle and to the outside. Um, and then one of the biggest things that I've done recently is my rooftop tent. So again, as I mentioned earlier, like I had memory foam stuff, I had a sleeping bag, I had a wool blanket, I had a cot, I had a tent, all that stuff. One, I had to remember to pack every time because it was too big to keep in the truck all the time. So I had to remember to pack it all, not forget anything or my trip would be sucky, right? Um, and two, it just took up a ton of space. So by going to a rooftop tent, it removed all that stuff, right? Like I don't need my tent. I don't need my cot anymore. My memory foam match moved to the roof. My sleeping bag stays up there in the roof. My pillow stays up there in the roof. Everything stays in the rooftop tent. So when I first did it, everybody's like, oh, why do you like, what's the big benefit to sleeping on the roof? And 
there's a little bit of benefit. I do like it. I do feel a little more secure from like animals. There are quite a few coyotes and stuff in Indiana that I've been surrounded by on more than one occasion. So it's just kind of nice to get up away from the bugs and the, the animals in the rooftop tent. But the main reason I did it was purely just to like open up a whole bunch of room inside my truck by moving stuff to the roof. Um, so again, that kind of covers the prioritization of gear and how to move stuff to the exterior of the vehicle. Again, you guys post up in the description down below because I'd love to hear how you guys have solved this problem with your own unique rigs, right? We all have different trucks. So I'd love to hear from you guys how you've solved this problem. So post up below. All right, guys, so then part three, making better use of the interior space. And again, this one sounds pretty common sense, right? But I'm gonna throw out some ideas that I've had which are, which are a little unorthodox and hopefully they're helpful for you. And again, as always, post up in the comments down below. Let me know the cool things that you guys have done on your trucks or rigs or cars or whatever. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys are doing as well. So here are some examples and, and I'll try and post up videos and, and pictures and stuff throughout here as I can to kind of give you a, a, a view of what I'm talking about. But so like one of the things that I did was I built a drawer system, right? And the exteriors, if you're not familiar with them, have a, by factory default, they have a thing called the Utilitrack system, which basically takes like a bolt with a little piece of metal on it that fits down in through the, the rail. And then when you spin it, it turns and it locks in place in there. So I actually have my drawer system locked down to that. But then on each side of the exterior, they have little like nets off to the side above the wheel wells where you could store a pretty decent amount of stuff. So on the driver's side of my box is where my air compressor sits. So it actually sits right over there in that little cubby and I have it stuck to, I'll put a link up here. I've done a video of how I did that mod too, how I attached the air compressor inside where you can remove it or leave it inside. Um, so I've got that over to that side of the box where it's just out of the way. It doesn't take up any like real space in the vehicle. It's wasted space because it's so small that I couldn't really use it for anything else. Um, but that just sits over there and it keeps my compressor dry and it keeps it safe and I've got it when I need it. Um, so that is one option. Now on the other side of the drawer system, I actually custom built sort of like using little L brackets and a bungee strap and some D rings. Um, I built a way along the side and it's almost like it's perfect. Like I have a little folding aluminum table that goes right up against the side of the, the uh, truck. And then on the outside of that is my ladder for my rooftop tent. And it just sits right in a little, I made a little bracket on the side of my, uh, the box, the drawer system. And the ladder sits right in there on that little bracket and sandwiches up against that table, which is held onto the side of the truck. And then I run, I've put D-rings on the top, like by the window, basically in the back. And I just run a bungee cord through both those things. And then it holds them to the side of the truck so that they don't move. They rattle a tiny bit, but for the most part, they don't move. They don't go anywhere. I've been off-roading with them and I've never had any problems with it coming loose or flying around or anything like that. Um, so again, taking weird spaces that aren't really intended for stuff and making them fit with the gear that you've got is a way to make the most of your space, right? Um, so that's one. Now the drawer system itself, right? Obviously now, instead of having to pack in and out a bunch of different Plano crates and storage bins and all that stuff all the time. Now I just have a permanent drawer system. It's got two drawers on the left. It's got a big slider on the right. In the back of the, the slider, I actually have all my uh, recovery gear in a little cubby that's built into the back of that. Uh, like I said, I've got my grill inside of the slider and then on top of it's where my fridge sits. Um, so that right there made, you know, I've got all my cooking stuff, all my fire starting stuff, my flashlights, my battery packs, all that stuff goes in the drawer system. So that again, I don't have to think about packing that every time. And since they all have their own spots, it's very efficient from a packing standpoint. It saved me a ton of room and a ton of time on packing stuff. So I love my drawer system. Definitely recommend them if you're not like dailying your vehicle or you have the room for it, or you don't have kids, or you don't need to pick up mulch or, you know, whatever that you need to use the back of your vehicle for. If you can dedicate it, do it. Another option, which is along the lines of the drawer system, where again, it depends on what your use for your truck is. If you're taking your kids around all the time, this may not be an option. And even for me, I do have a couple of, you know, seven and a 10 year old. So it was a little bit dicey, but I actually removed uh, one of my seats. So the back seats in an Xterra split 60, 40 basically, and they fold flat. But even when they're folded flat, I mean, you're still losing like eight, nine inches of space because that seat back is just sitting there. Um, so what I did was I actually on the passenger side, I removed the seat back and the seat bottom. And that bought me again, like eight, 10 inches of space, just vertically all the way across the back seat. And now I don't have that seat back in the way of the sliding drawer or any of that stuff. So it's just like a total pass through. Um, 
And so that gave me a ton of extra storage space. So I actually, most of the time I keep my tent toilet, toilet tent, uh, sitting flat back there with the toilet on top of it and it still is less space than the old seat cushion itself took up and then I can just pile stuff on top of it like kitchen gear all kinds of stuff just goes on top of that my backpack I can throw that back there and have my front seat free for a passenger that kind of stuff um, so if it's possible and you can remove a seat that's cool again similar to that a bed platform or something along those lines if you can flatten out all that space and make it usable as a bed and then put some storage underneath of it a lot of times folks will put hinges on it and then you can store stuff down underneath of that that bed platform that's a really efficient use of space too right so again it depends on your application it depends on how you use your vehicle but a bed platform can actually buy you a lot of space buy you a lot of storage and make your trips more comfortable right um, um, another thing that is popular with Xterra people, but probably happens in other vehicles as well, is the Attic, which basically is like, I know there's a company called Wrangler, it's like Wrangler, Wrangler, that makes a like a net solution for the Xterra that uses the stock hooks and basically like holds it up. But then you can put all your soft stuff up there. So like wool blankets, sleeping bags, you know, any sort of soft stuff, pillows, you can put all that stuff up there and it holds it up and it uses up that space above everything else that you're not really using for anything. Um, so that is a great option too, if it's available for your vehicle. Um, another one is the hatch mod. So again, I'll put a link to this one up above too, but one of the things that I've done to my Xterra is I actually removed the plastic cover for the rear hatch and then I bolted um, quick fists to that. And then I have a shovel, I have an ax, I have a flashlight and I have a little Mora knife all attached to that back hatch. So again, it's vertical. It's There's nothing that can be used right there. Even with my drawer system, it does not come into contact with that. It, you kind of have to measure and be smart about it, right? But all my stuff fits as if it was OEM and it's it's all out of the way. Like a shovel would be such a nightmare to try and store. Yeah, you can put it on the roof rack, but then it gets rusty, it gets rained on. It's hard to get down. You got to get up and, and do it versus with the hatch. I can just go like this and right above my head. I can, I can undo a couple quick fists and I got my shovel or I have my ax. Um, so again, making use of those spaces that aren't really intended for storage, but if you can do it, if you, it's not going to destroy your, your truck and you don't mind making that modification, that could be a good option as well. And then last, um, another thing that I know for Xterra's there are a ton of, and I'm sure for all vehicles, they, there are people out there custom making Molly panels. Um, so like for the Xterra, they have Molly panels for the back windows that will just go fit basically right over your back windows. And then you can attach all kinds of stuff to those. There are stuff for your doors. I recently sold a set of those to a buddy of mine. Um, but so you can attach those things to your doors and put Molly stuff all over your doors. You can get them for the back of your seats. I have a seat cover on my driver's seat that has all Molly webbing on the back of it. And then I have like a first aid kit on the back. I have some fire starting stuff and I have like a little trash bag um, for like the kids to put their trash in so they don't make a mess because you don't want your kids making a mess in your filthy, dirty rig. Um, but so again, maximization of your space, right? Look at what's out there. Look at what you want to prioritize and what you want to spend your money on. And you can save a ton of space just by being more thoughtful with the stuff that you are buying, with the type of stuff that you're getting, with the way that you're utilizing the interior space, with the stuff that you can move to the outside of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it. So again, I just wanted to touch on that stuff because I thought it was pretty interesting. And I also think it's pretty interesting the like the length of time that it's been. It's only been a few years for me. And like my truck has totally changed 30 times. Um, so again, I wanted to save you guys some heartache and some, some trouble by kind of passing on some of the things that I've learned and hopefully giving you guys some interesting, exciting ideas and tips for things that you might want to try. Um, but again, not to harp on it too much, but I love it when you guys comment. I love talking to you guys. If you're doing something really cool, post up down below and let me know. If you have a question about anything, post up down below. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you made it this far too, thank you. I appreciate you watching and listening the whole way through. Um, if you don't already have an All Things Overlanding patch or an All Things Overlanding sticker, they are available on the website. If you go to allthingsoverlanding.com or click through the link below, um, there's a store link. It's called Merch, I think, on the website, because why not? It's short and doesn't take up a lot of space. And uh, if you click through there, you can pick up a patch, pick up a sticker, and I'd be happy to send it to you. So, again, thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, post up in the comments and let me know what you guys are thinking. Thanks. Talk to you later.